Well, two years ago, when Democrats won control of the state Senate for the first time in more than 40 years, returning Republicans were subjected to their first taste of being in the minority. And let's just say, for many of them, it was an eye-opening experience. They hated it. Members insisted that they had not realized how little power and money they had been giving to their Democratic counterparts. But now that the GOP is back in control, they're taking steps to make things more equitable. And that includes my next guest. John Bonasek is a member who represents the Hudson Valley. Thank you very much for joining us. You've actually been a voice in the wilderness on this. You, at one point, even sued. You joined forces with a, a Democrat. Sandy, was it Sandy Galef on the other side, Assemblywoman Liz Galef? Kruger. Liz Kruger. Uh, there, but there, were there Assemblywoman members? With Sandy Galef uh, yeah. back in 206. So you've sued a number of times. Well, not a number of times, Liz, but we've been out there for over five years right. uh, saying there's a better way. Uh, to treat members and their constituents. Uh, the old culture was if you're in the majority, you punish the minority member mm. and you don't give them equal resources, you, uh, you, don't, uh, you don't give them equal staffing, you don't give them equal member items or capital, and uh, you make them irrelevant. And that's terrible because uh, we have intelligent uh, and uh, wonderful elected officials on both sides of the aisle. And the problem with that culture is that uh, it's based on the wrong premise. Uh, the right premise is that when a senator comes into office, regardless of party affiliation, he has to provide, he or she has to provide services uh, to their constituents. So when you deprive a senator of resources or member items, you're not hurting that senator. You're hurting the constituents. And why should uh, you discriminate against constituents that are represented by a minority member or a majority well, member. Well, I think that makes a lot of sense, certainly, and I think most people who are watching say, well, that's, that's okay, sounds great, with the exception of the fact that that old saying, to the victor go the spoils, right? I mean, uh, the, why bother having a minority and a majority at all if you're going to make everybody equal? Then you should just go for bipartisan government and be done with it. When we talk about equal, we talk about resources to serve constituents when it comes to proposing solutions, providing legislation, uh, that's where the majority should shine, uh, assuming that they're connected to the people and they can get things done. The problem we have in Albany is uh, cultural and philosophical differences uh, between a city mentality, let's say Sheldon Silver, mm. and you have an upstate mentality, normally in the past represented by Senate Republicans that have traditionally been in the majority for years. So those two philosophies clash, and uh, the governor tries to drive one or the other uh, philosophy depending on what party they belong okay, to. Okay, so you have not, up until this point in the five or six years that you've been pushing for more equality, been successful in con actually convincing your colleagues that that should be so. Not, not, not with the Republican conference. Right. Uh, but uh, we did make some progress uh, two years ago. After the coup. After the coup, right. you're right. Right. And uh, they were turtle steps but they were steps in the right directions and uh, I want to build on that and I want to remind my colleagues uh, in both houses, especially the Republican conference, you may be in the majority today but two, four, six years from now you may be out mm. and that should not impair uh, the ability of a, a senator to function and provide resources to the constituents similar to other senators. So there are, uh, by January 18th, you were supposed to come up, you and, and these three fellow senators. I, I note, by the way, um, it's yourself, Mr. Libis, Mr. Hannon, and Mr. Griffo. All of you are Republicans. Why didn't you just let a Democrat on there to discuss new rules? I'm told that, uh, first of all, that Senator Young is a part of that. Uh-huh, okay. Uh, and also then, a Republican. And, right. Okay. And, and, and I do think uh, that the purpose of it was to see if we could make any progress amongst ourselves mm. between January 5th and January 18th. I believe that it's going to take more time uh, to get our conference on board. And uh, Senator Skelos, by the way, our, our majority leader, is open to a more democratic process. Mm. I think uh, he's come a long way. 
and he wants to do more, and I think he's going to appoint a bipartisan commission after the 18th of January, Liz. Commission to re-examine re the rules in the chamber. And to move it forward, the agenda. Okay, on State of the State Day, we had these four breakaway Senate Democrats, right, break away and create an independent Democratic conference. And, and yes. I asked them why they had not joined you guys outright, and they said, well, we're Democrats, and we want, a, we want a conference over here by ourselves. However, Senator Skelos said to me, well, I'd be happy to make some of these people maybe not those guys, maybe some other Democrats, chairs of committees, which, uh, um, which has what we call a lulu, which is a stipend, right? Sure. And then also he would give them more resources, recognizing them as a conference. That isn't sitting well with other Democrats. I mean, it just seems to be getting more complicated in your chamber instead of less complicated, which I think is what you're trying to do. Well, uh, first of all, um, I have uh, friends in the Democratic Conference. When I say friends, they're people I can trust, uh, people that I can talk to to move the people's agenda. Uh, but I, I want to speak about the four that broke away. I, I don't know the new Senator Carlucci from Rockland, but I know the other three. And uh, it was disappointing that they didn't show that independence. Uh, in the two years when they were in the majority, hmm. when we got burdened with those uh, 14 billion dollars in new spending and 10 billion in new taxes, it was only after they became a minority conference that they're now asserting this new independence. Um, I I look at it as an inside baseball problem within the Democratic conference. But had the Democrats retained the majority, would those four? Be, well, not Mr. That's Colucci, but would question. the other three be stepping up? That's an up? interesting question. So you don't think it's real? Uh, I think they have some serious problems with uh, uh, with uh, Mr. S uh, Senator Sampson, but you know that could change from day to day, week to week. Uh, and I don't tend to referee what goes on in their conference. So do you expect actually that there will be more in terms of? First of all, will, will there be member items? Uh, I I don't know. I think with this economy. Um, it, it's uh, it's something that we're going to have to look at in the budget. F f uh, when I s heard uh, Governor Cuomo's state of the state, uh, for him to address this nine to ten billion dollar deficit, mm. he's got to take on education and he's got to take on health care because that's the lion's share of the state budget, mm. and he's got to take on all of those unions. And uh, is he prepared to do that in terms of uh, you know getting control of uh, state spending? And um, so uh, we're looking to see um, to what extent he's going to, how deep is he going to dig? Uh, and I think on economic issues, uh, our conference is, is, is going to be there mm -hmm. with him because I do believe the state is in crisis. Well, I want to actually have you come back after January 18th so we can talk a little bit about what, if any, progress you make in trying to move your colleagues to treat Democrats nicely. We shall see. Okay, I nice. want to, in the meantime, I want to thank you, Senator Bonadag, for coming, and I appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Liz. It's my pleasure.